Hello everybody, hope you are doing well. I'm Mohamed Saeed Eidelmi, a PhD student under the supervision of Associate Professor Johnson Shen. Uh, and uh, my uh, topic is related to graph structure information management system construction. Uh, I should mention that uh, I uh, started my um, PhD in uh, less than six months. So uh, I'm in this stage in the literature review. So I uh, focus more on the um, uh, categorizing the conducted research uh, and um, sharing the idea and the problem state. Uh, okay, as a quick introduction, uh, if we want to modelize the data flow in a construction project, we can consider it in a three steps, the input data, the processing, the data, and output uh, data, which is used in the uh, application and utilization of uh, the information and process data. And if we're looking at the input data, uh, in a construction project, uh, a construction project are accompanied uh, with series of input data, and these input data are uh, in a, um, a wide uh, variety of data types and with advances of technology uh, in a, a different format. And uh, as an example of a variety of data type, we can uh, see that the design and architectural data, project management data. Uh, communication, multimedia, IoT, and sensor data. So um, a wide variety of their data type, and each of them are uh, could be in a different format. And if we're looking at the uh, uh, processing the data and usage and application, one of them is uh, related to construction monitoring and construction progress monitoring, construction risk and safety monitoring are uh, some important tools to control the process of the construction, to uh, manage it uh, in an appropriate way. So it's really important that uh, we can uh, process uh, uh, input data and produce valuable information. So if we consider the uh, middle part uh, about the processing the data, uh, it's obvious that uh, we need uh, a system to uh, store uh, input data and uh, managing the information uh, related to this. Uh, and uh, uh, if you look at the history, uh, researchers try to uh, find a solution related to the, uh, uh, based on the, what the project needed and uh, uh, in line with the level of the technology. Initially, they uh, proposed some manual and paper-based information system by advancing the technology. Other type of uh, information uh, management system proposed like a spreadsheet, a CAD-based, uh, a scheduling software, data management system, and cloud-based information management system. And uh, by uh, entrance, the building information modeling and concept to the uh, construction industry, focusing and um, uh, uh, using the two main uh, uh, advantage of BIM model, uh, object-oriented nature of the uh, BIM model and a good capability uh, of uh, visualization of data. Some uh, uh, Researchers uh, propose that using BIM as an uh, information modeling, uh, information management system. But uh, there are some challenges that if uh, we uh, consider the uh, solution of a paper and a researcher try to uh, solve that, we can categorize it in uh, three main areas about the exchange data and interoperability. We know that the BIM model produced by different uh, in different phase of construction by different uh, discipline. How this kind of data work together is really important. And uh, another is improving data retrieval process. And the uh, third category is linking other kind of data to BIM, which basically not involved in the producing of a BIM model, like the text document or images, videos, other kind of data uh, linked to the BIM model uh, that works together as an information management system. And let's talk about the knowledge graph. Knowledge graph is uh, a structured representation of knowledge and uh, that model the relationship between the entities uh, and by using it, 
It's facilitating the uh, organization, uh, the retrieval, the ana analyzing the data, and uh, um, the knowledge graph used the graph structure to model the relationship between the entities. So based on these, uh, it's uh, better performance in uh, editing the entities, the relationship be between entities, and by uh, considering these advantages, uh, researchers try to solve the problem in the construction industry. If we uh, uh, review uh, what they uh, propose for solving the problem in construction industry, five major uh, uh, areas we can uh, recognize. They uh, improve, they uh, propose using knowledge graph to improve real-time data integration, safety management, construction workflow and process optimization, communication and collaboration, and uh, documentation and knowledge management. Uh, but a uh, very important uh, question arise, uh, why did a researcher use graph structure uh, for modeling the data or graph formats of uh, representing the data? Uh, if we consider the uh, works, we can um, understand two main reasons. First, um, they using uh, the graph to achieve interoperability. Uh, for example, a paper in uh, 2023 tried to uh, link the structured data like beam model in IFC format to an unstructured kind of data like text documents. And by using uh, and showing uh, the graph structure, try to link these uh, two types of the uh, data together and link to each other and uh, work it uh, together. And the uh, second reason, they try to uh, using graphs for understanding data relationship, which if we understand the data relationship between different uh, domain knowledge, and different information uh, knowledge, uh, we can understand uh, this relationship and uh, we can consider it in our analyzing and uh, produced uh, uh, for process information and output will be more valuable and uh, become more accurate. And uh, in a summary, if we uh, want to summarize uh, about the um, what factor needed in a construction process uh, to uh, uh, for the solution related uh, to producing the information management system related to a construction process? Four items should be uh, addressed, four challenges. The first one, interoperability between different formats of data. As we mentioned about the input data, different, a wide variety of uh, uh, data and in a different format. So it, all of this should be uh, worked together to have a better understanding and better uh, information management. And the second one is modeling relationship between the different entity. If we can model this uh, uh, relationship between entity, we can analyze it better and uh, uh, better information or process data. And uh, the third one, data retrieval process, uh, the, our solution should be uh, work efficient in data retrieval process by uh, using the, for example, digital twin or uh, other kind of uh, system that need uh, real time uh, data extraction, uh, our solution should uh, address this kind of uh, factor. And the last one about the size of data, uh, the advancement in the technology in one hand uh, increased the diversity and different formats of uh, information, and in the other hand, uh, increased the size of the data. We in the construction project uh, face a uh, uh, high volume of uh, data and uh, the size of data is really a matter. So the solution we can, uh, we, the solution we should propose should address uh, at least uh, all of the, these four items uh, to work to, uh, properly and uh, address uh, what really a construction 
project management needed. So uh, based on uh, these challenges identified and uh, based on the ability uh, mentioned about the uh, um, uh, a structure, a graph uh, a structure representation of the information and data. Um, I personally uh, think that uh, these two things can uh, match with each other and using uh, some kind of a graph structure information system can uh, address the, the uh, challenges in the construction project management process. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. I will be more, more than happy to open the door. Yeah, thank you very much. Actually, you are discussing exactly these topics that Rob was starting with about interoperability, relationship, uh, establishing links between the data, the data retrieval, everything what you mentioned in construction. Are already very yeah topics that open to special consortium and in the geo special uh, yeah domain is already discussed and worked for quite many years. Yeah. So it's, it's it's a very active community. There have been any number of uh, GIS BIM uh, um, projects and things looking at relationships between them, um, and it's. It's probably worth thinking about why none of them have really had massive impact. Uh, um, and one of the challenges is that um, the BIMIFC world is not very good at identifying objects in a way um, that you can then reference them later on. Um, now, with the 3D cluster work, we're looking at um, uh, BIMIFC geometries. So, why they care about the points, uh, the, 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 the vertices of things? But uh, there is no way of identifying that inside a, you know, a shell of a, you know, a geometry inside an IFC. Um, so uh, there's, there's a lot of impedance mismatches around the, the semantics of what you know, um, is is actually being looked at. So I think, uh, yeah, that's, it's going to be an interesting challenge to try to work out where you can start breaking the problem down into pieces that you can have impact on. Um, I don't think you can solve the whole problem at once um, because there is just too much chaos out there. I mean, BIFC is a new version every six months for the last 10 years, plus, plus every single um, vendor implements a different subset of it. Okay, And again, it's because they're all trying to hit the elephant at once. We, end all, we have all these half-digested elephants. I'm sorry about the elephant lovers in the room, but there's, it's a mess out there. And so... Um, and that's one of the in the check profile project. We're looking at identifying profiles of city GML and to inspire land use and um, and uh, and BIM data that are required to meet the reg regulatory environments. So we're going to end up with this family of profiles with a lot of common elements that are well. This is a subset of data that you need. This is how we can standardise just that aspect that's needed to look at this particular regulation. Um, and so there, there may be some ways of thinking about how you systematically solve parts of the problem so that these solutions aggregate and become something over time that every single person doesn't have to solve the entire problem. And that's not a trivial part. There is also another, uh, I think the reason that in construction and you don't have that much identification of objects because it's the purpose of building models of construction is completely different. In geospatial world, we create the data to be used and reused. While in construction, yeah, this process of using the data is getting very late, much later than in geospatial. Yeah, geospatial is not that good at it either because we often it's have, not good. We often have layers yeah, where, but... where the the identifiers are relative to the layer and the layer changes over time, so the identifiers are not stable. So we have a lot of static examples. That's true. It's still the of... concept of having objects and trying yeah. somehow to preserve these objects for later use is much stronger. Yeah, strong, yes. yeah, in the construction. And, and I think to that point, I think there is two fundamental fundamentally different approaches in the, if you want to say geospatial and, and construction. The, 
in the constructions, we build these models, we design these models. So that's starting with design. In geospatial, we are mapping existing things. So that makes a huge difference. Uh, while now in the construction operation, then you want to use also, you want to map and uh, use that map. And that is where the, uh, I mean, uh, our research in BIM, that's where we find the fundamental difference is that you're designing th something as opposed to mapping something. And that is, that makes the, that makes it, that makes this data model that we use for design almost not quite practical and usable when we are uh, we want to maintain and use the system. So I think that is where both both of your research, I think, needs to look at, I think, from that perspective as well. It's designing or we are mapping two different things, two different approaches. Yeah. Now, one of the corollaries around the, the Czech um, project is the idea of having a profile of city GML so that when you're designing, you can download the um, you know, the, the, the set of design constraints that retain um, and effectively your design will start off then with relationships to uh, that existing existing you know, aspects of the cityscape and it would automatically be geo-registered which is another challenge um, so th there was there was some thoughts about whether we could um, you know, provide a, a geospatial skeleton for the design process um, but again, you don't have to deal with all of CDGML to do with that. So the mechanism of can we define a subset that we need to do just that operation? I mean, we have to be able to optimize that. And this is why you know, we're lifting ourselves by our food traps all the time, because we've always treated these standards as great big model of thing solving the entire problem, not this little part that solves this part of the problem. I have a question. Uh, maybe I come late and miss something. One part is a very interesting topic. You generate these graphs based on what? Because you are talking about the graph. Yeah, yeah. Then what kind of research method you are know, going to use to generate this graph? Okay. Yeah, I, I should mention that in this stage, I'm in a literature review and categorizing all the work and, and uh, the problem statement, but uh, there are some attempts uh, related to, for example, changing or transforming the uh, IFC B model, uh, X model, and the information to graph structure. So uh, by considering all of these separate uh, efforts, we can uh, uh, aggregate all of these uh, to consider uh, creating an um, information system based on the graph base. So uh, um, uh, it's uh, in short that uh, we can uh, make all the data available, linking the relationship between them, but uh, the exact methodology is under the development and it's yeah. under the, 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 the IFC model already have this kind of uh, relationship to yeah, so, yeah. I mean, based on the existing IFC model, do you think to create a, a more, is that, is that the same thing? Or what, what kind of improvement were yeah, it, it, for it's, the existing IFC model? Yeah, it's kind of a part of the uh, this uh, information system. As I mentioned, that one paper, for example, uh, linking the IFC model yeah. to some kind of structure data like text document and try to using the uh, connection by the graph model. So uh, this idea will be expanded to um, uh, linking other kind of uh, information, input information uh, to each other. But uh, the exact methodology is not really clear at this stage. Mm -hmm. We are working yeah. this process. Yeah, very interesting because uh, I have a PhD student doing a decision support for the model or framework. Yeah, yeah. Uh, integrating BIM with digital twin. Mm -hmm. And her idea is uh, because the BIM model and the model is existing and mature, um, but recently the digital twin model, um, the digital twin technology was not integrated with BIM because that captures live data. And that's her research focus on how to integrate the digital twin data, the live data, because BIM data is more mainly the design data. So I think your research seems 
um, trying to integrate some yeah, of the things, 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 and it's, yeah, um, but her research is focused on one thing, on uh, um, uh, reduce carbon. Mm -hmm. to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just part of it because I can see you're setting up a huge framework mm -hmm. if this is for the construction industry. Then that's, uh, yeah, it, it's very ambitious, but I'm looking forward to see your next step. It's very interesting research. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can make a small break so everybody can yeah. walk around, take some coffee. Yeah. Well, we've just got a few um, comments too again uh, in the comment section. Yeah, we got time for a quick, or the break, or a... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just read them out loud so they're on the record on the recording. Um, I'll put these um, two uh, comments together um, from Alice Dare. Um, it was a really interesting presentation that covers much of the ambition to build a digital first platform. Um, I'll go to the second comment. A significant advantage of this approach over current processes, the data remains in the digital world and increments its value as it moves through the plan, design, construct and manage process. In the current process, data value is lost at the end of each stage. So there's the uh, question, uh, say, would you uh, be interested in understanding, in, in your understanding, if you felt that this was going to be delivered by government or the private sector or both? Um, I think it's kind of a basic that will be usable for, uh, for uh, managing the uh, private section and it can be expanded to the some government. It's not clear that uh, it's depend on the interest of uh, both uh, section, but it's have some advantages uh, to give to both of them. Yeah, can I just jump in to add some background information into this project? Actually, we're working with the Transport for New South Wales, the government agency, and also we're working with uh, SRG, one of the tier one construction companies, on an ongoing like uh, intersection traffic project, uh, infrastructure project in Jervis Bay at the moment. So we're collecting all the data every two weeks, airborne scan, ground-based scan, and also 360 images, IoT data for all the equipment and civilians cameras. So what I'm trying to say, it might be a huge benefit for both the government and private sectors because at the moment it's a big question mark how we're going to use those data, what type of analytics we're going to deliver. But going back to Rob, I think that is the real impact we are creating here. Yes. Uh, just one last question, might be a quick yes or no answer um, from Monica. Have you looked at the uh, digital first platforms such as uh, Procore, Autodesk Construction Cloud or Trimble Connect? Uh, have you looked at the digital first platforms, such as software, such as Procore or Autodesk Construction yeah, Cloud? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, I'm looking and uh, search it, and uh, we want, uh, want to have some solution related to using this kind of uh, application. Okay. We're not going to compare all of those software platforms, yeah. but we start with Autodesk yeah. as, as a benchmark. Yeah. 